there are a couple groups that I was going to introduce as I went along, and I'm looking around and seeing that I didn't do it. So I just want to uh, mention a couple folks here, and then I'll go right back to taking questions. Um, the people who work with me in Annapolis, uh, Anne Goldcher, and she wrote up this reminded list, list for me, and she wrote most trusted and dedicated legislative aid. So I appreciate it. Anne Goldcher. Uh, Connie Cooney, who is uh, in Annapolis working as an aide for this session. Where are you, Connie? She also teaches or, or gives laughter therapy over at the Senior Center, so she's much loved over there. Uh, Laura Seamer, a UMBC student who's down working with, with us in Annapolis this year. Barbara Carter, a Columbia resident who's working as an Annapolis volunteer. Good, you guys, don't be shy. Yeah. Uh, Brent McBride, who's a Ralph Scholar at Howard Community College. He's working on environmental issues with me in Annapolis. And Karen Berry, who's a Wild Lake High School student, who's volunteering and helping me with uh, some of the technical things that I'm at here. So they're great. They're really great. And then, um, there's a group that I met uh, for the first time last week. They are, uh, they have named themselves Pick Up America. There are four of them here today. Stand up, guys. Carrie Klein, who lives in Columbia. For those of you, they are working on, they've produced excellent literature that they can show you. And they are working on a walk across the United States to promote not only pick up of trash and things in our streams, but to promote how the whole idea of taking care of our streams and waters is just so important to everything they do. And uh, they're starting right here in Howard County, uh, going to work their way across, and I'm just really, really proud of them. So why don't you just give your <laughs> first name, Scott. And then obviously, they're, they're not going to get paid to do this. So why don't you, this is Kelly here, and I'm Jeff. I grew up in our county. Yeah. My name is Davey. I'm from right down the road in White Oak. Yeah. Right down the road. Yeah. Well, down 29. There you go. And I'm Kim Alexander from Alney. Yeah. Okay. We have our email sign up here. If anybody's interested in getting e-newsletters about our campaign across the country, I'm just going to pass that around. Oh, great. Okay. And then it'll be in the back at the uh, end. And you know what I'll do, Anne? Do you have your pencil? Uh, or your pen, uh, in the next e-newsletter, we'll put your email in there. Thanks. So that people will be able to get you. And all, all the best to you guys, really. They asked if I wanted to join and walk with them somewhere. <laughs> so um, I just may do that when the session's over. Uh, some real <laughs> nice, cool place with lots of lace where you can <laughs> stop. And, so anyway, thank you for what you're doing. You're an inspiration. Okay. I'm almost finished with this, and I want to get back to questions. Um, I wanted to, I talked about campaign finance reform, and I failed to mention Gary Magnuson. Some of you may remember John Gardner and the common cause that was formed when, you know, a lot of us were as young as these folks here who were going to walk across America. And Gary is not only head of common cause in Howard County, but he's head of common cause Maryland. And, uh, so he's working on these, these open government issues, these clean campaigns. And uh, he, he works at NOAA, is that right? As a, as a scientist. No, last time you looked. So this is all volunteering that he's doing. Oh, you have an announcement. OK. That's right. Good evening. Some of you know Liz because of her constituent services and her service to the county and her environmental record in Annapolis. But what you may not know is that Liz is a state leader in open and good government <coughs> campaign finance reform. And she has agreed to headline our program, which is going to be right here at Taylor Hall, on Saturday afternoon, the 27th of March, from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. Come join us for pizza, beverages. Pizza? Hmm. Didn't pizza know about that. And talk about a concern that I sense that is on your mind in the aftermath of this U.S. Supreme Court decisions. So come yeah. join us, okay? Yeah, do, do join us. And that also, and 
Let's put that in the e-newsletter as well. And any of you who are not on our email newsletter and would like to, we're working on, you know, I guess you all have the same experience. I hope it's not just me. Email lists are living organisms. You know, they're, they're never static. So we're doing our best. And if we're not getting you when you want us to, uh, just let Ann know. Okay, Myra, ah, yes. Oh, let me do this. And not just because your hand's up. No, no, up, 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 up. Myra Frazier grew up in Howard County and is out doing just wonderful legal work and is uh, very, very knowledgeable about the mortgage foreclosure issue. And notif I bet you want to tell about a mortgage foreclosure symposium or something. Yeah, would you do that? I'm sorry, Myra. Yeah, no, um, thank you for the opportunity um, to come here tonight. Um, as I said, I've known Liz since I've been seven years old. I'm not going to mention how old she is and how old I am. Yeah, that's very kind of you. <laughs> But we both love our current ages, don't we? Yeah, yeah that's right. I appreciate that. Um, I think uh, Liz, um, just to rightly point it out, the severity of the mortgage crisis uh, in the um, state of Maryland. Howard County has one of the lowest foreclosure yep. rates in the state. However, Prince George's and Baltimore County, I'm sorry, Baltimore City and Prince George's County, respectively, have the highest rates um, of foreclosure. And as Liz rightly pointed out, the, the apex of that crisis is just now beginning. Um, one gentleman mentioned, you know, what does one do when, you, when you're in that precarious situation? And because of the terms of the loan, lenders have the opportunity to foreclose at various stages of the process. So it very well could be two months. It very well could be ten months. It depends on the equity, the amount of equity in the home, if it's a securitized loan versus a fixed loan loan, what your payment is with them. It's a very idiosyncratic process. But in order to help uh, consumers to make better decisions as they along with the mortgage foreclosure timeline, there is going to be a mortgage foreclosure solution uh, workshop here uh, in Howard County on March 6th uh, from 10 to 3, hosted by Bridgeway Community Church. Um, and I can make this information available to the staff for individuals who feel that they need um, to talk to someone, to a volunteer attorney. Mm -hmm. um, it's no longer in qualified in respect of what your income status is. You can uh, talk to a free attorney and also pre-register. Also, there will be a workshop this coming Saturday in Woodlawn, uh, sponsored by Congressman Cummings, uh, which was previously rescheduled on <coughs> February 6th through the snow. Through the snow. So um, I can make these, um, I've already made the uh, money bank available to this, so um, she can put that and, in the and we will. We will put that in the e-newsletter. Do you have that, Ann? I'm not, there you are over there. 